Hello, hello, Tony here, back on my channel once more with another deck profile. Continuing on with our coverage of Blazing Vortex, this week's deck profile comes straight out of the golden sands of the Albar Saga, with the flaming machines known as Springens. Now to give a quick overview of what Springens are, Springens are a series of fire attribute machine type monsters centered around their unique field spell Great Sand Sea Golgogonda, which allows the deck to cheat out their Xyz monsters at low cost. This combined with Springens natural ability to load up their Xyz monsters with themselves provides the deck the infinite fodder to activate the Xyz monster effects multiple times throughout the game to clear boards and go for damage. Now before I proceed any further, I'd like to give a quick disclaimer. Despite what your expectations may be out of this archetype, Springens at the current moment are a little incomplete. Like Tri-Brigades in the set before, Springens don't have the entire breadth of their support coming straight out of the gate, and they're lacking a number of pieces that would make the deck completely playable, including an upcoming searcher as well as an additional Xyz. As a result of that, this deck's initial plays may come off as a little clunky if not simplistic. Now that's not to say this deck is unplayable. With the proper cards and the right deck engineering, this deck is capable of putting up amazing setup followed up by a fantastic grind game, things that I do want to showcase as I get through the deck profile. Anyway, I've drawn on enough, without a further ado, let's get into the deck profile. Starting off the deck profile with some low level Spriggans, we have the 3 Spriggans Petal as well as the 3 Spriggans Rocky. Both of these monsters have on-field effects that allow for recovery for this deck. Spriggan's Petal here can tribute itself to target one Spriggan's in the graveyard and then summon it back, while Petal upon being summoned allows you to target one Spriggan's monster in the graveyard or a Great Sand Sea Golgogonda and add it back from the graveyard to your hand. In addition to creating a localized loop where Petor can tribute itself to summon back a Rocky in the graveyard and then Rocky can activate its effect to add back the tributed Petor, both of these monsters recovery effects can be useful in a lot of unique situations. Petor's effect to bring back any Spriggans from the graveyard allows you to bring back some of the higher level Spriggans coming up which can be used to make some hard rank 8 Xyz monsters in certain situations. Meanwhile Rocky here's ability to add back a Spriggans monster or the Golgogonda provides great recovery especially since in certain situations you do need the Spriggans in your hand to be discarded for some of your effects. Moving on to the higher level Spriggans, we're playing 3 Spriggans Branca as well as 1 Spriggans Captain Sargus. Now you're playing much less copies of the level 8s compared to the level 4s purely off of the fact that these level 8s actually have no effect to summon themselves directly onto the field, thus making them bricks in the hand. However, while on the field and in the graveyard, they are the most powerful Spriggans. Branga can banish itself alongside another Spriggans monster to search any Spriggans card from your deck to the hand. Meanwhile, Captain Sargus, while on the field, can as a quick effect detach an Xyz material from another Xyz monster you control to target one card on the field and destroy it. Now until we get further support cards, Spriggans Branga and Captain Sargus will have to serve as your form of consistency and disruption for the deck. It's actually quite easy given the cards that you play in the deck to get Branga as well as another Spriggans in the graveyard to banish both to grab any Spriggans that you may need for the current situation. Meanwhile, Captain Sargus can be summoned back to the field with your Spriggans Petor, which on the field after having established another Spriggans Xyz monster provides the deck a level of disruption that it usually cannot produce. Speaking of Xyz monsters, to give context to the rest of the deck, we're going to be diverging a bit from the main deck monsters to talk about the Spriggans Xyz monsters, of which at the moment there is only one, that being our 3 Spriggans ship Explorer. Explorer is a rank 8 Xyz monster with a very unique effect. On your turn, you can target one zone in the main monster zone or in the spell and trap zone, and then by detaching any number of materials from this card, destroy cards in that zone and in the zones up down, left, and right of that selected zone, effectively acting as a non-targeting little tactical nuke. Furthermore, on your opponent's turn, Explorer can banish itself until the end phase of that turn, effectively dodging anything that your opponent would do to this card on that turn. And it's with these two effects that you can effectively build a strategy for Explorer. On your turn, you detach any number of materials from this card to clear out your opponent's field. And then on your opponent's turn, you blink this card out of existence, preventing your opponent from getting rid of it, so that it can come back on the following turn to repeat the process once again. Now it's at this point you may notice one of the first glaring problems for the deck. There is no way given your current Spriggan's monsters to consistently make this card using any of your two level 8s. Now, to circumvent that however, we're going to be diverging from the extra deck monsters after already diverging from the main deck to talk about our unique field spell in the Great Sand Sea Gold Gargonda. 
Great Sand Sea Golgogonda is the quintessential field spell for the deck, which practically does everything for the Spriggan's archetype. By sending one Spriggan's card from your hand to the graveyard while you do not control a Spriggan's Exceeds monster, you can special summon one Spriggan's Exceeds monster directly from your extra deck. Furthermore, should a Spriggan's Exceeds monster leave the field by a card effect, not just your opponent but also your own, you can target one monster on the field and prevent it from attacking that turn. Now, understanding what Explorer does, it's pretty easy to see how Golgogonda combos well with this card. Not only can Golgogonda summon out Explorer directly from the X deck at the cost of any Spriggan's card that you may have, it's effect to target one monster on the field and prevent it from attacking whenever a Spriggan's Exceeds leaves by card effect, like for example off a of Spriggan's Explorer's Banish effect, limits aggression, allowing you to live for multiple turns to get Spriggan's Explorer's effect off multiple times safely. But it's at this point you might notice a second glaring problem with the Spriggan strategy. Whenever you summon out an Explorer off of the effect of Golgogonda, or whenever Explorer comes back from being banished, it doesn't have any materials, so how can you activate its effects? Well that's where the Spriggan's main deck monsters come in handy. Diverting back into the main deck monsters in one giant circle, all the Spriggan's main deck monsters come with an effect where while they're in the hand, field, or graveyard, they can target one Spriggan's Exceeds monster you control and attach it to that monster as an Exceeds material. And it's with that that the full Spriggan strategy comes into focus. While controlling a Golgogonda, you can discard one Spriggan's monster from your hand to the graveyard to directly summon out your Explorer from your extra deck. From there, that discarded Spriggan's monster can attach yourself to that Explorer as an Exceeds material of which Explorer will then detach and immediately to destroy a card your opponent controls. From your opponent's turn, you can then banish the Explorer, not only protecting it from anything your opponent might do, but also triggering your Golgogonda to prevent one of your opponent's monsters from attacking. On that end phase, the Explorer comes back, which on the following turn, you can once again activate your Spriggan's monster in the graveyard to attach yourself to the Explorer to repeat the process once again. This strategy, while powerful, is also very functional in a number of ways. Not only can the discard off a of Gold Golgonda put any dead level 8 Spriggans directly from your hand to the graveyard, but by summoning out Explorer, you give all the Spriggans in your hand the ability to attach itself to that monster as material, which through its detach effect or its banish effect, inevitably puts all those Spriggans monsters in the graveyard, providing an easy way to not only put Branga into the graveyard, but load up on other Spriggans to be banished with Branga to get its search off. Furthermore, Golgogon has a nifty effect to increase the attack of all your Spriggan's Exceeds monsters by 1000 attack, putting the 1600 Spriggan ship Explorer into 2600 attack, making it very good to battle. And when an Exceeds monster battles, you all know where this is gonna go. Moving on to some of the non-Spriggan's cards, we're playing 3 Scrap Recycler as well as a Scrap Wyvern engine in 1 Crystron Rosenix and 1 Scrap Golem. Now, Scrap Recycler alone, upon being summoned, allows you to send any machine type monster directly from the deck to the graveyard, being an easy way to send something like Branga to the graveyard to set up a search. However, through the entirety of the Scrap Wyvern engine, it's actually easy to summon out Scrap Recycler multiple times and then make a curious to not only dump the Branga but also an additional Spriggans as well, guaranteeing you a search. Furthermore, should you already have the means to already dump two Spriggans into the graveyard, this entire package also makes a 3 negate Appaloosa, which on top of the Explorer gives you additional disruption and plays on your opponent's turn. Moving on from there, we're playing 3 Quick Draw Synchron as well as the 3 accompanying tuning to search set Quick Draw Synchron. Now this package here serves the purpose of just putting Spriggans in the graveyard through a multitude of means. Not only can tuning mill a Spriggans monster potentially from the deck, but searching into the quick draw synchron you could then send a Spriggans monster from your hand to the graveyard to put itself on the field. Not only putting level 8 dead Spriggans from your hand to the graveyard, but then putting up field advantage that may be used for other link plays should you not have an explorer immediately. Finally, rounding off the hand traps, we're playing 3 Ash Blossom. Now, I could suggest that you could also play something like Gamma, especially since when you banish something like Explorer, you may not control any monsters afterwards to make Gamma live. However, given the fact that Spriggans can sometimes be bricky with their level 8s, and then you're playing the Scrap Engine as well, you're playing a fair number of bricks already, and you don't want to make it worse by playing an additional brick in Driver as well. Thus, we're just playing the 3 Ash as our general hand trap for this format. Moving on into the spells, we start off with the most powerful spell in our deck in our 3 Spriggans Watch. Now, Spriggan's Watch is many things. First off, when activated, should you not control a Gold Golgonda, you can add one Gold Golgonda directly from your deck to the hand, effectively being a terraforming. 
However, should you already control said Gold Gargonda, it then gains the additional effect where you can instead add one Spriggan's monster from your deck to the hand, and then send one Spriggan's monster from the deck to the graveyard, effectively being then a Rhoda and a Foolish Burial as well. Now, if my card choice is in playing things like Scrap or Cycle and Quick Draw hints at anything, it's that I'm clearly playing an engine focused on putting Spriggans from the hand or deck to the graveyard, particularly Spriggans Branga. The reason for that is because Branga can search into your Spriggans Watch here, which is by far one of the most powerful consistency cards that I've ever seen printed for an archetype. Not only can Watch grab your Gold Golgonda, which is the lifeblood of your deck, but it also provides a huge number of plays should you already control Gold Golgonda, plays that only get better as you open more pieces for the combos. For example, suppose I control a field spell as well as the means to put a explorer on the field. Spriggan's Watch then gives me the ability to send a Captain Sargus from the deck to the graveyard and then search a Petter from my deck to the hand. I can then normal summon said Petter, tributing it to bring back the Captain Sargus before then attaching Petter to my ship explorer, giving me disruption on my opponent's turn. Alternatively, should I not want to go that route, what I can do instead is send a Branga from the deck of the Graver while searching another Spriggan from my deck of the hand, of which I can then attach to my Explore. When that exceeds material eventually goes to the graveyard, I can then banish the Branga as well as that monster to search for another Spriggan's Watch, effectively looping the combo over and over again, always guaranteeing that I have two materials for my Explore at all times. Wrapping up the spells with all our power cards, we have the aforementioned 3 Gold Golgonda as well as the 3 Tuning, but we're now also playing the newly added 3 Pot of Prosperity. Now, I know someone's going to ask, is there a cheaper alternative? And the answer is yes and no. Realistically, you can play something like just another draw card like Pot of Desires or something even like Pot of Extravagance, since your extra deck is kind of flexible in that way. However, the fact is you do need specific cards for some of your combos to go off, and Pot of Prosperity is probably the only card that effectively allows you to do that. So perhaps there is not an alternative, but you can just play other consistency cards instead. From there, we're playing the one Foolish Bear as a means to dump any Spriggan's monster from the deck to Graveyard, as well as the one Terraforming as another way to grab into our Gold Golgonda. Rounding off with the traps, we have our three Impermanents as our quintessential trap to negate, as well as our two Spriggan's Blast. Now, Spriggan's Blast is a unique trap that functions somewhat similar to an Imperm in some ways. On the field, should you control a Spriggan's monster and you activate this card, you can target one zone on the field. Should that zone be unoccupied, that zone cannot be used this turn. However, should it be occupied by a monster, that monster's effect is negated and it cannot attack. Now, the realistic reason why you're actually playing this card is because it's a Spriggan's card. As I mentioned before, Gold Golgonda requires that you send a Spriggan's card from your hand to the graveyard to summon out a Xyz monster from your extra deck, which sometimes doesn't necessarily have to be the monster, but it just can be another Spriggan's card. In this case, since Blast is a little more effective than playing a level 8, you're playing the two Blast because at worst, should you already see the Gold Golgonda, Blast is another form of disruption on your opponent's turn. Moving on into the extra deck, we start off with the Lynx with the one Salmigrate Almirage as a way to link away a low attack Spriggans to put it into the graveyard. We're playing the one Battleborg Blocker as an easy link to that allows us to discard putting Spriggans into the graveyard. The one Union Carrier, since all our Spriggans are machine, it's easy to make this card, attach a Spriggans to a Spriggans, and then send both to the graveyard. We're playing the one IP Masquerade as a link monster that we can make to go into our other link monsters on our opponent's turn, specifically our Nightmare Cerberus or our Nightmare Phoenix as removal. We're playing the two Scrap Wyvern as a means of our Scrap Engine, which in some cases goes into our Curious the Light Sworn Dominion. Otherwise, the other endpoints for that is either a Access Code Talker or an Appaloosa. Moving on from there, we're then going into the Xyz monsters with our three Spriggan Ship Explorer, as well as the one Zeus that we can make whenever our Explorer might battle. Now it's at this point that we reach the combo opponent of our deck profile. And I'm not gonna lie, there really isn't a lot to show you here. When the basic strategy of Spriggans is to summon a ship, blow up some cards, attack, pass, rinse, repeat, there isn't exactly a lot of crazy combos I can do. However, that doesn't mean that there isn't something I can demonstrate here. For one, I can demonstrate how the one Scrap Recycler can provide instant setup for your Branga play, or I can also show you how Zeus comes into play with the rest of the deck. Anyway, without a further ado, let's grab these cards in, begin our combos, and let's go. Starting off our combos with the Scrap Play. The Scrap Play requires that we open a Scrap Recycler as well as any card that we can put on the field or set. Now, if you're going second, you don't even need the second card. However, for the sake of argument, let's say we are going first. What's going to happen here is that I'm going to first start off by setting said card and then normal summoning my Scrap Recycler, of which I could then send a Christian Rosenix from my deck to the graveyard. I'm going to banish the Christian Rosenix to summon out a token and then link away the token and the Scrap Recycler to summon out my Scrap Wyvern. 
Scrap Wyvern's effect is then going to activate, allowing you to bring back the Scrap Recycler and then blow up the Scrap Recycler, of which Scrap Wyvern's second effect will trigger, allowing me to summon out a Scrap Golem from my deck to the field. Then, on resolution effect, it will then blow up the set card I have. From there, I'm going to activate Scrap Golem's effect to bring back the Scrap Recycler, triggering its effect once again, this time to send a Spriggan's Bringer from my deck to the graveyard. From there, it will depend on what I have or what I already open. Should I already have the means to put another Spriggan's monster from the deck of the graveyard, I can convert all these monsters into a 3 negate Appaloosa or into a Axis Code for game. However, should I not have that and I need another way to put a Spriggan's into the graveyard, I can link all three monsters away, all being Earth but of different types, to summon out my Curious to the field. Curious will then trigger, allowing me to send another Spriggan's monster from my deck to the graveyard, guaranteeing that I at least have two before the mill of Curious is effect to trigger my Branga. From there, I can then banish the Spriggan's monster as well as the Branga to then grab a Spriggan's watch from my deck to the hand, of which then, depending on what else I open, I can continue my plays from there. Regardless, this play guarantees that I get the Spriggan's watch into the field spell, which will then continue all my plays. Moving on to the Zeus combo um i'm not gonna lie this isn't really a combo more as it feels like more it's just like the natural progression of how you want to play spriggans the way that this combo works moreover is it's going to be a slow build up into zeus through multiple turns suppose on my turn one i get my field spell on board maybe i played a spriggans watch to dump something like a spriggans branga and then get a spriggans into my hand and then let's say from there i summoned out a ship and then let's say from there i pass my turn i banish a ship i survived until my turn three for it to come back this is how I want to play that following turn. From there, I'm going to battle with my Spriggan ship at 2600 attack, guaranteeing that I probably will run over at least something, and in doing so, it unlocks my ability to make Zeus. From there, I'm then going to activate Branga's effect to attach a monster to the Explorer and then slap a Zeus on top of it, guaranteeing that it has at least two materials to send everything on the field to the graveyard. Now, Golgolgon is unique in that it summons out a Spring and Succeeds monster as long as I didn't, don't control a Spring and Succeeds monster. Not that I don't have to control any monsters, it's just that I don't have to control a Spring and Succeeds monster. And since I converted my only one into a Zeus, I can then activate Golgolgon as effect once again, sending the other Spring and monster from my hand to the graveyard to summon out a Nether Explorer. Passing to my opponent's turn, I can then banish the Explorer to the end phase before activating Zeus's effect to nuke the field, which in this case, my Explorer will be safe since it was banished. Finished. Then, on the following turn after that, since I now have a ship and a Branga in the graveyard, I can banish that ship as well as a Branga to grab another Spriggan's Watch to continue my plays, potentially making more destruction and maybe another Zeus if I played another one. And that's going to do it for this Spriggan deck profile. Now, usually in this case, I'd say something along the lines of, in the good player's hands, this deck could do really well. But I'm not going to lie. This deck, like I said, is incomplete. And missing all the support cards it has available, it has a tendency to be a little bricky. And I don't think it can do a lot at the current meta outside of a casual level. Regardless, that doesn't mean that this deck doesn't have amazing potential. Cards like Gold Golgonda and Spriggan's Watch are some of the most powerful versions of field spells and support cards that I've ever seen be printed. And as more Spriggan's cards come in from other sets, I know this deck has the potential to do really well going forward, just not now. Regardless, my name is Tony Yang. This has been a Spriggan's deck profile. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you guys next time.